you've got to have a follow-up strategy mm -hmm. of how you're going to bust the ghost. Yeah. Right. And the number one thing is what matters to them so they can. Mm -hmm. And I don't have it right next to me, <laughs> right. but nobody buys an iPhone to make a phone call. Hello, and welcome to this episode of the Ask Valor Masterminds podcast, brought to you by A Advanced Services and Fuse Networks. My name's Galen. I'm Joe. And we're coming at you from the Creative Block Studios in Seattle, Washington. So, Joe, for our new listeners and viewers tuning in, how do we start this podcast? So, it first started out as a Facebook group page, and the purpose was just to bring business owners together to kind of communicate and talk and kind of more of a brainstorming group, kind of just work with one another to help each other's businesses grow. Uh, because we're in a marketing company, we get a lot of questions from clients and just businesses in general outside of marketing. Mm -hmm. And we thought, what a better way than to bring on different guest speakers to talk about different, different topics that are relevant to their business and can help them grow professionally. Awesome. Um, and today's topic, Joe, who are you going to call? Ghost busting. All right. Let's, we're going we're gonna to bust some ghosts as it relates to business and sales. But uh, today's guest to share that insight is uh, Lynn Whitbeck. Lynn, thanks for being in studio. studio. It's always <laughs> cool to have an in-studio guest. The dynamic's so much better. We get to talk face-to-face -face and everything. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. All right. So for people that don't know who you are, introduce yourself to our audience and what you do. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm Lynn Whitbeck. Uh, business owners and entrepreneurs hire me to ignite winning sales because most lack the leads they need, uh, the client retention, conversion, and profits. And uh, I love sales. It is the best thing. I Just building those relationships, those lifelong relationships. And if I'm not out doing my sales consulting, you may find me at a national park or playing Pokemon Go at a national park. <laughs> awesome. awesome. So curious, what is your why for what you do? I love to help and serve others. I mean, that's a core essence of sales. It's mm -hmm. about bringing solutions mm -hmm. and, you know, taking one thing off their plate. You know, it's not rocket science, but on the other hand, when I see that I've helped someone and they don't have to think about something again, right? right. Woohoo, that's a win. <laughs> uh, so let's get to know you uh, a little bit more. We asked our guests the same three questions. So I'll ask the first one uh, What are some early lessons learned as an entrepreneur? Early lessons learned are not to do it all. Um, mm. And, you know, you, you just like, oh, I have to be on every social media platform. I have to do this. I have to, do, I have to be doing webinars. I have to be doing a podcast. Mm -hmm. I have to be doing all these things. No. So the first thing is to really have that sales strategy. Mm -hmm. Who is your ideal mm -hmm. client? Where do they hang out? How are you going to connect with them? Because most likely, in my case, they're not on Pinterest. Right. You know, they, they, right. you know they, it just doesn't just matter not, to them. Right. Right? right. And so when you do that, then all of a sudden you can narrow your scope mm -hmm. and focus your attention where it's going to make a difference. Mm -hmm. So that's the biggest lesson that I learned uh, starting out. Awesome. Right. So in your years of experience, what's been the best piece of advice that you've been given? Wow, there's been a lot, but the most one that's really sticking with me right now that has more resonance is that if you keep doing the same thing in six months, you're going to be exactly where you are today. Mm -hmm. What's funny is on a previous guest, that's exactly what they mentioned. So it's almost like, what's the definition of insanity, yeah. right? Doing right. the same thing over and over and, and over. And expecting the same results. Yeah. Or, yeah. or expecting different results. That's right. the real definition of right. insanity, right. right? All right. So since this is a marketing podcast, why is marketing important? Well, you know, sales and marketing are kissing cousins. Mm -hmm. I've already said that. And so marketing really helps you create that frame mm -hmm. about the sales strategy. And it is part in you know and, and everyone's gonna i always think of course sales is more important than marketing you gotta uh -huh. sell something yeah. but it's how do you communicate mm -hmm. with your ideal clients right and where do you need to be mm -hmm. what's that messaging need to look like how do you need to be showing up mm -hmm. in, authentically but consistently right right and where your clients 
your potential clients hang out in bunches. And that's the role of marketing. And it is really important because there's so many different ways mm -hmm. that you can apply marketing. But if you don't start with who are you trying to reach yeah. and what's their why, you just lost from the day one. Right, because when you market to everyone, you market to no one, right? Yeah. So. yeah. Uh, now we come to the part of our podcast, our A Advanced Services Pump You Up Quote of the Day. So I asked Lynn for a quote. I'll read it and then get your thought on it. So your enthusiasm and receptivity to pushing your comfort zone is a superpower. So enlighten us with some insight on that quote. Well, uh, it's all about growth mindset. Mm -hmm. at, at the end of the day, if you're not constantly learning um, and embracing change, mm -hmm. You know, I mean, when I started out, they, I'm sorry, I'm going to go back when dinosaurs roamed the earth. They didn't even have a fax machine. I still remember the first fax machine that came into the office, and I went, what What the heck? Uh -huh. You know, the owner just bought this toy. Okay. Right. Well, within a month, I couldn't live without it, yeah. right? And so think about it. Like, now I can't live without my, you know, my iPhone's right next to me, yeah. like, at all times, right? So... Uh, but it's not just the toys or right. the electronics or those, but there's changes in everything mm -hmm. and our perception and how we respond to things. Yeah. And it's that ability to say that I have a choice mm -hmm. and I can choose to make a new decision yeah. because new facts and figures have been presented to me. And so I want everyone to embrace that idea that they have a choice. Mm -hmm. And sometimes... The choice doesn't seem like it's easy or even clear. Right. So like when my husband was diagnosed with terminal cancer, that's not like I didn't have a choice, right. but I actually did. I could choose how we were going to move forward. Right. And we we're going to make every day matter. Mm -hmm. So in the darkest of times, in the toughest of situations, you still have a choice. Right. And it's your responsibility to make that choice. Awesome stuff. Uh, so now is our Fuse Networks Did You Know segment. 78% of ransomware demands start right here in the office. How are you protecting your business internally and externally against cybercrime? Call Fuse Networks, your local Seattle IT experts at 206-701-6040 for a complimentary vulnerability assessment to see where your business risks are and help your company fight cybercrime. Uh, so the topic today, we'll get into it a little more. Ghost busting, right? Who's, I ain't afraid of no ghost, but <laughs> I get ghosted. Anyway, the, I'm going to read a couple stats, and then I want to get your thoughts. So we've come from the sales world. We talked about that discovery call and before we filmed, but I'm going to read these. Actually, Joe, read the first one, please. Yep. Yeah. 92% of sales pros give up after the fourth call, but 80% of prospects say no four times before they say yes. So enlighten us there with that quote, you know. Um. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it's, this, it's the truth. I mean, people are not ready to buy instantly. Yep. It's very unusual. And they haven't even established a like, know, and trust factor. Mm -hmm. And in the B2B world, you know, their jobs could be on the line for the decision they're making. Yep. Right. So, you know, they're going to need to know that you're going to you're credible that you're going to be there, mm -hmm. that you're capable, that, um, that what it's going to be like to work with you. Yeah. And that develops over time. Mm -hmm. And so that requires you to continue your outreach and to follow up and follow up with things that matter to client. And when you do that, that's when you then can close those sales. Mm -hmm. And as you close them down, they've gotten to know you better. You've gotten to know them better. Yeah. You understand their situation better. You're okay. more likely to be successful. We actually had a guest on. They said that it's now up to 27 touch points. So if you're out in sales and you're trying to get a new client for whatever whatever your product or service you're selling, that you have to touch them 27 times. I mean, I remember it was like seven times, <laughs> and now it's 27 times. So right. I understand that stat of most salespeople will give up after three or four. And some of those touches, too, are not direct contact. So right. like they're touching you from your social media or vice versa, you're commenting on something they did. Uh, the touch points now are different in this kind of um, multi-dimensional mm -hmm. uh, world, right? Uh, so this stat, only 2% of sales happen <laughs> at the first meeting. So if I go to like my state fair and I'm walking through, I'll buy something there. But we're talking about like you're, you have a product or service that you're selling or you provide a service to your community 
you just don't one call to happen on a one call close, right? We were just talking about it before we went on air, you know, the, the one call close myth and everything. But uh, talk to us about that. 2% of sales happen at the first meeting. Yeah. So, I mean, in a B2B world, um, it's just highly unlikely. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, there are all these things have to come together in this magic, you know, mix. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and so when you think about that, that really, really focuses your mind on what you have to do in your yeah. sales strategy and your marketing strategy so you can create the environment and the atmosphere so that you can continue to connect with right. your ideal client in a way that matters to them so that you can move the conversation forward. Right. Yeah. Joe, this last one, please. Stay vigilant. 83% of prospects who request info don't buy for 3 to 12 months. I mean, I know that to be true because when people try to sell me or I'm getting info on something, I'm, I'm in that 83% of prospects. I typically don't want to be sold right away. I want to learn and I want to right. analyze and I want to do research and I want to do all these different Other things. Other feedback, reviews, yeah. those kind of things and everything. So. Yeah. Well, and once again, you can even look into personality coding, you know, mm-hmm. so that someone who is a high expert or who is a high optimizer or blueprinter likes to plan. Mm-hmm. They're not going to make a decision right away because they're going to need to get into the details. They're going to want to look at right. the systems yep. and the processes. And somebody who is more nurturing, which most people ha- are high mm-hmm. nurturers, yeah. um, or it's a high element in their balanced code, um, they want to get to know you. They want to know how you're going to treat their people or their community. Right? right, right. And then there are those people who are high action. They're the catalysts. They're the ones right. who have ants in their pants. <laughs> now... Um, those people still have the other par- aspects of the code in their system. Mm-hmm. You know, everyone's a balanced code. So unless they're super high action and really low on everything else, <laughs> right. yeah, but those are also the most difficult people to work with because they can't stay focused. Right. right. You know, and so when you think about it, you know, most people need that time to get to mm-hmm. know you, to understand what you do, how you're going to help and serve them, and to make sure you're speaking their language. Right. And that you're answering their big whys, their questions. What are their top pain points? What are their top questions? What are their top objections? Mm -hmm. You've got to work through those things. All right. So ghost busting, right? You get ghosted. You, you, uh, you go to like a networking event, you show up or you have a booth or you have people out on the streets, you pass out business cards, businesses get this information. You try to call people, never call back. To our audience like right now listening or tuning in, uh, what are one or two things wrong you see businesses do when they try to reach out this way and they're like, are so surprised, like, I made 20 calls or I made 100 calls, I got no response back. Or, um, they can't get past the gatekeeper or something. Uh, what, what do you say to those businesses out there? Well, okay, so there's two different parts. So on the ghost busting side, A, the number one reason people get ghosted is that the people that you're trying to reach are busy. Mm-hmm. They are busy, busy, busy. Legitimately busy. Yeah. Right. Yes. You know, and they got a lot of things going on. So here's the thing. So if you take that part out of the equation, this is not about you. Yeah. You know, and instead they're busy. So how do you get to the front of the queue? Uh, for, first of all, you got to speak their language, why it matters to them. Why is this important that they get back to you? What can you answer? What kind of information mm-hmm. can you provide? Mm-hmm. You know, and keep it short, crisp, to the point. Right. Right? And so Not when, a five-page email. <laughs> <laughs> right. So. so, I mean, I have this thing that, a uh, technique I call the triumphant triangle. And so it's three touch points. So I pick up the phone. Mm-hmm. Hey, Joe, I am super excited about this new widget that does X, Y, Z. Yeah. Hey, listen, I'm going to drop you an email, and it's going to have a link so you can look at the latest case study. This is going to knock your socks off. Oh, by the way, this is Lynn. Lynn Whitbeck with Petite to Queen. Mm -hmm. Click, right? Now, what did I do there? First of all, I said, why does it matter to you? You know, and and I'm I'm just ad-libbing this right now. So so now now the whole thing is that I've already got an email ready to send to Joe, and it's about the widget that does this with the case study, and here's the link to go to that case Mm -hmm. study. Now, Joe may not call me back. I had this with a corporate account. I went to my 13 steps. Well, this is, I have a 13 step process, not 27, (laughs) but so anyway, let's close out the loop. So three business days later, so you send the email Mm -hmm. three business days later, what's the network that you're connected on? So for me, it would be LinkedIn. I'd send a LinkedIn message with the exact same message, same wording as the email. Yes. And send it. 
Okay, so that's one, two, three. Now you move on, and I wait a week to the next outreach. Mm -hmm. So you're going to mix up the methods and the means that you're going to do that. For me, when I was talking about that example with a corporate account, a huge account, um, one of my step 12 is sort of like the Hail Mary, and I sent a meeting invite, which would mean that I would fly in to have mm -hmm. a, a lunch meeting. A physical face-to-face -face meeting. Lunch meeting, right. Yeah. right. And he accepted. And I got on a plane. I flew in. I mean, I, and he never responded. I confirmed when I was arriving uh -huh. and that would be in the lobby and trotted into the lobby. He trotted down the stairs and we went out and had a three-hour lunch. I moved the sale forward. I right. closed that sale many months later. Mm -hmm. And right. he told me that all the different times I'd done the outreach, that I was answering things that it, you know, made sense to him that he needed to mm -hmm. know and that he just never could get back to me. He was so busy putting out fires yeah. all the time. But when I sent that lunch invitation, he went, goodness gracious, great balls of fire. <laughs> this is it. I'm going to make the time. Yeah. Right. And we did. Now today, come on, you guys can send a, a you know, an Uber Eats or yeah. a DoorDash or some kind of certificate and you can still get together. And whatever your business is, it's going to be different. For some of you, you could go on site and mm -hmm. do that. But right. the whole purpose is that what we're talking about with ghost busting is you've got to have a follow-up strategy mm -hmm. of how you're going to bust the ghost. Yeah. Right. And the number one thing is what matters to them so they can. Mm -hmm. And I don't have it right next to me, <laughs> but right. nobody buys an iPhone to make a phone call. Right. Last time I checked, nobody. Yeah. You know, it's for all the other things. Oh, I got to have all this extra storage so I can have 25 movies on my phone, right. whatever it happens to be. Right. So here's the thing. What is there so there can? What's that dream? What's mm -hmm. they're trying to achieve? What's the goal? What's yep. the initiative? And when you speak to that, and then what are the things that are keeping them up late at night? Mm -hmm. You know, what's those, that, those huge pain points? Right. What are the thorns in their side? monetizable pain points yeah. what are their aspirations you know it's sort of funny because when you start to get into that sometimes people think like maybe people in hr or environmental health and services are more concerned about the the bottom line right well ironically they actually are more concerned about taking care of their people yeah and if you're not talking about how you're going to take care of their people you're missing the boat. Mm -hmm. Right. You're not speaking their language. And that's where marketing comes in when you have a really good team with the sales and the marketing working together right. to put that in a package that makes sense to your mm -hmm. ideal client. So it's, it's really breaking down, like speaking to your prospect, since we're talking about sales, in almost their narrative. Under, it's not just, oh, okay, this is the owner of this law firm, this plumbing company, this, this dental office, uh, we assume they like these things. It's really going like the extra step, right? Because it's not the shotgun approach. It's, you gotta be more exact and like yeah. you're, but uh, with a strategy too. I mean, we've heard it before the, the sales trainings we've gone on, mm -hmm. like, or different marketing methods with coaches that have come on, make the initial touch, follow, up, follow, up, follow up. 90% of salespeople don't have a follow-up strategy, yeah. but you're more intentional with, I'm doing this, this, all the way to the Hail Mary, you know, like... Well, I actually have the baker's dozen, so <laughs> yeah. I still have a 13. <laughs> there you, is... you have one in your pocket, right? Yeah. So it's all, almost like your version of a challenge and, and, fight. And yet at that point, <laughs> so. it's not like I give up on them t totally. It's just that they go into a different queue. Yeah. So then right. they get, re they get uh, you know, a touch point three months, six months, yeah. a year later. Yeah. But and your follow-up is as detailed follow-up, not just general follow-up. So you're not just sending the same generic message to everyone that you're reaching out to. You uh, have something specific. You know, it's a combination of things. If you're dealing with the same type of clients, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's certainly some things that you can template, mm -hmm. right? And that's the strength of being more effective and efficient. Yeah. And yet you're going to want to customize it. So even if, like I was using that example that you sell to HR and the risk management and right. EHS, all three of them have different whys. You know, they have different pain points. Mm -hmm. they, are, they have different things that are motivating them, uh, different things that are aspirational. So you need to create that dialogue for those three. And, of course, you may not know that individual what is going to spark something that that really speaks to them. But yeah. you create this map, a roadmap, mm -hmm. so that when you're working with someone in risk management and you're asking questions and you listen. Yeah. You listen, tell me more, help me understand. Right. 
You know, how does that make you feel? You pull out more information and then you can see, okay, they're, they're aligning this way. Also, if you recognize the personality code mm -hmm. that they are, right. you already talked about how you like to research it. So I would say right off that you're, you've got to be a high expert. And then you use those words that are going to be attractive, mm -hmm. right? And right. you stay away from trigger words. So if somebody is a really, um, they love to blueprint and map things out. I love to blueprint map things out. It's pretty <laughs> obvious because I'm into strategy. Um, but if you use something like, oh, this is a big um, opportunity and it's, you just got to be spontaneous and, right. you know, that and goes it's like, against the personality. and yeah. it's like, <laughs> well, you know, and, and I have an actual really balanced code, but that's, if somebody is really high in one thing or they're averse to something, mm -hmm. you need to know that so that you can communicate more effectively one-on-one -on -one with them. Yeah. And so these are all just pieces of putting your strategy together. But the big piece is understanding who are those ideal clients. Mm -hmm. To your point, you're not going to be selling to everyone. Right. You either have your own background, something that you were in this industry, you really understand it well, or whatever, mm -hmm. right? And that you're going to be focused because when you focus, then you can speak in the messaging that matters to them. So for our audience out there now who they've thought about doing this, mapping out a customer journey or profiles, um, they're stumbling on this episode, but they're not sure how to do it. What Are there one or two steps that any business out there could do before contacting you if they need more help? <laughs> but the DIY, because we want to tr try to always provide value to our audience. What are one or two things you could say to our audience now about, you know, this is how you should do it, starting on the right path? Well, the first thing you need to do is understand your client thinking. Mm -hmm. So what do they want, need, or lack? Why does it matter to them? What's in it for them? So they can. Mm -hmm. Now, as you map that out and you're really looking at that, you know, what do they want, need, or lack and why it matters to them, start looking at what are the pain, common pain points? Mm -hmm. What are the common solutions that they're looking for? What keeps them up late mm -hmm. at night? What are the thorns in their sides? What are the things they just love to have off their plate? Yeah. You know, um, what are they really, and then really digging into that, what's the goal, the aspiration, that the dream mm -hmm. that they truly want? And that, when you really hone in on your client's perspective, not mm -hmm. yours, right. You know, but theirs, and it's not that hard. Mm -hmm. You know, the voice of the customer is available for anyone who wants to take and invest some time and do some interviews yeah. with either existing clients, past clients, or people who would be ideal clients, and just ask them for 30 minutes of their time, be right on target with 30 minutes, ask them those questions, and stop talking and listen. Yeah. And you will be able to gather that information so that now you've got a really good client perspective of their thinking and the way they're thinking so that now you can start to work on your messaging. And this includes so that when you are in that situation and they mm -hmm. ghost you because they're busy, remember <laughs> they're busy. It's because they're busy, you know? Um, I mean, there are other reasons, right? They may not have a burning buying need. They could, um, you know, just not be ready. They could have other things that they've, they're, that are just need to be done first, yeah. right? And of course, there's always the "What did you do?" Right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's highly unlikely. It's usually that they're busy. Right. So then it's now, what are the pieces I need to have in place so that I can that case study? Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, some other type of I'm going to sh uh, share a podcast mm -hmm. that's going to be valuable for you. And it's a quick 30 minute listen, or if you watch it on YouTube, you can watch it at one and a half times and make it even faster. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so, it, you know, you put those things in place and most people already have these assets right. at their fingertips. It's just a matter of putting now the messaging around it and a plan around it. And then, you know, so these are my ideal clients. These are, I've got risk management. I got EHS, I got HR. Mm -hmm. They have these different perspectives. These are the pieces to pull in. Yeah. I got a I got a follow up question to that. So, uh, is it different, or how is it different to strategize for if you're a business in a competitive industry, like if you're a plumber, there's a hundred plumbers near you, or a business where there's not a lot of competition, but your story hasn't been told. Like, you have a, it's hard for you to get in front of people compared to 
everyone's looking for you. How, how does that differ with you, kind of your coaching approach, I would say? Yeah, so I'm not a coach. Or a consulting, <laughs> consulting, consulting. I, a, a coaching I, method, which sure. uh, you yeah, yeah. So. I'm a consultant. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, no, it's all good. But um, I just want to clarify that. Uh, it's not to say I don't coach my clients on having mm-hmm. conversations, right. but, um, you know, those are very different approaches. Mm-hmm. So if you're the plumber, you know, and there's lots of competition, yeah, but what makes you unique, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and how do you lean into that? And how do you make sure that you have a very aggressive referral process in place? Mm-hmm. So this is seeding the idea. Like, I am so glad that you called me today and I came out to take a look at your leaking toilet. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you know, because, <laughs> you know, most of my clients are referrals right. from other clients. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, so let me just take care of this right now. And I want to make sure that you're 100% satisfied. And then as you're going through with the invoice, it's like, I want to make sure that you're 100% satisfied so that you will be able to provide me with those referrals mm-hmm. um, and a five-star review. Always ask for a five-star review. Don't ask for a review. Ask for a five-star review. I right. believe in that. <laughs> so <laughs> ask for what you want. But the thing is that with the plumber, you're going to want to have what's distinctive, what's authentic about you. You know, I like playing Pokemon. I could lean into some kind of Pokemon thing or right, some kind right. of national park thing, right? Um, oh, I see. I knew I was going to hit. The, I knew I was going to hit the mic. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, uh, but what is it that's unique, right? And then just lean into that because mm-hmm. it, it's going to make you stand out. Yeah. Right. Um, and something that is um, authentic to yourself. I mean, yesterday was actually International Ninja Day. Oh, and I immediately thought of my daughter because she was really into, um, she has a brown belt in karate and all this other stuff. And it was like, oh, you know, this is right. so cool. Yeah. And so if it speaks to you and it's something that makes sense, you know, lean into that mm-hmm. and then create a strategic partnership. Who else would you go? Like real estate agents, uh, other types of contractors, electricians. Mm-hmm. I mean, you've got a whole network that you can work with, right? right? People who do remodels. You know, they're going to need plumbers, right? All of those things. You've got both a strategic partnership for referrals, but you're asking for reviews and referrals from those existing clients Mm -hmm. and you have it strategically planned. Awesome. Uh, And then for the other business. Right. So, all right. What was the other business? The other (laughs) business is more like uh, not so competitive. There's not a lot of choices in the marketplace, but people don't know like this business would exist. So something more obscure i I can't think of something mobile welder oh there you go a mobile welder right yeah so one of the things is i would probably start with what are the types of questions people would be asking on google Mm -hmm. you know use something like also asked or answer the public to try to Mm -hmm. figure out what are people even asking about so that how would they find you Mm -hmm. and so if you because you could literally put in mobile welder and then see what comes up yeah right now now you have some content ideas, blogs you need to write, uh, podcasts that you need to do, <laughs> yeah. um, uh, short videos that you need to have so that you can use those keywords so that you actually come mm-hmm. up in a Google search. Now, if you're a mobile welder, you're also going to want to you know, do, be doing geo uh, location and mm-hmm. everything else mm-hmm. because you know, you're going to be in a specific area. So, you know. That's a whole side of marketing that, you know, I only know enough to be dangerous, so I'm not even going to go there, but it's a very different approach. Mm -hmm. So you're going to be using something. How are people going to find out about you? Right. Now there's other ways too. There are home shows. Yeah. Right. There are other types of, uh, events that they do like at Home Depot. Yeah. That you could be showcasing some of the Home Depot products, but showcasing that you're a mobile welder and you're going to be doing this on-site training. I knew I was going to hit the mic again. So there you go. Um, there's a lot of different... You just got to think outside yeah. the box a little. How are people going to find you and discover you? Um, once again, I reach out to real, realtors. Um, they're going to have all kinds of houses that have different things and they might need a mobile welder on their Rolodex. Yeah. So for you, for... Businesses out there who need a consultant, you know, looking for a coach, who do you work best with? Like, give a pitch to yourself on why you'd be the right fit for businesses out there. (laughs) Um, Well, I work with B2B businesses who truly care about their clients and want to create long-term relationships and impact for their customers. Um, And because then I can just dive in 110%. Mm -hmm. When they give a darn, 
because I do. <laughs> is it is that a, do you work with specific industries really well? Uh, you know, I work with a lot of service and product based. Okay. Um, um, either manufacturers mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. they deliver a, a product or service. Um, those are really areas that I understand, you know, a mm -hmm. lot of the different aspects. And also when you're working with somebody who's creating a product, uh, you can really talk to that operational side, yeah. um, which can really make sense um, for them. And how can people best get hold of you or uh, you have free information online for people to kind of discover what you do and everything? Oh, absolutely. I have a plethora of things. So <laughs> Perfect. my website is petite and the digit two petite to queen.com. Okay. And there's everything in and everything on there. So if you are looking for like you want ghost busting, you just put that. We built a very robust search and then you're going to come up with articles. You're going to come up with as I keep hitting the mic, <laughs> <laughs> episodes. And um, I also teach and train on sales every week on my TV show called Get More Clients. Nice. Oh, nice. And you can watch it there. You can subscribe to it as a podcast. You can watch it on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can watch it on um, – it streams on Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and Roku. So let's, let's oh. talk about that real quick. We didn't know about that uh, before this podcast call. How would that come to be? Uh, TV show, the idea, uh, not being a podcast, being a show. Talk to us about how that came to be. Uh, well, it was, it's a new, it's a new, relatively young network. It's called okay. Win Win Women. Mm -hmm. And so I had a friend, um, get started in Win Win Women. She told me about it and I considered it, but you know, I had a lot going on, I'm, yeah. I'm, you know, and so, and I am not the type of person who make that instant buy decision. So right. I sort of wanted to mull it over and think about it. And so over time though, um, about six months, I decided, you know, this makes sense for me to do. So I went ahead and signed up to be a show host, and uh, and of course you know you it airs on Win Win Women. Well, yep. of course I was going to have a strategy behind right. it. So it took another three months because then I repurpose it. it goes onto our website. It goes onto YouTube. I've got over ten thousand subscribers there. Mm -hmm. It goes onto a podcast. That's so, awesome. You know, eighteen different. You know, all of the all of the podcasts, and then we also then repurpose the content to create articles, but. I teach and train on my core sales strategy every single week. Hmm. And so for DIYers out there, woohoo! You never have to pay a penny. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Free resources here, so that's awesome. Uh, so th yeah, thanks for uh, being in studio and sharing that with us. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, it's another thing we'll plug for you. You know. Oh, thank. You. Um, but yeah, you a lot of great energy and insight. You obviously care about what you do, and you answered the why that we yeah. asked. So thank you so much. So on behalf of our sponsors, A Advanced Services and Fuse Networks, my name's Galen. I'm Joe. And we're coming at you from the Creative Block Studios in Seattle, Washington. Lynn, thanks for being in studio. Thank and thank you everyone for watching and tuning in to this episode of the Ask Valor Masterminds Podcast. Thanks everyone. Mm -hmm.